Good day everybody, my name is Dean. Welcome to the first Adroit Online Training video. This video is recorded during an online training session, how to create a new maps template. For those of you not familiar with the maps product, I recommend that you head on over to the Adroit website, www.adroit.co.za. This video has been recorded in two parts. The first part will show you how to prepare the three aspects which are required for a new maps template. The second part will show you how to add these components into the MAPS library. Please be advised that Adroit will assist you in adding your new templates to the MAPS library if required. In this video, we'll be creating a simple group start template. In part one, we will show you how to set up your function block, create the graphics and configure your agent server. I will now hand you over to Vaynant who will guide you through the process. So it's a very simple function block and um, it's basically just a, a latching start circuit. So then what we do is I then create a global variable, uh, call it start1. It is of our type sample start. and we just give it some addresses you'll see that my marshal will be D100 and then the bits inside will be the individual bits of that register So that's my global variable defined. Then the next step is in my program to put an instance down of the function block. this the data for start one we have the function block for start one and then we're just linking everything up so I have my run feedback I have my control word I have my field output and my status word and the rest of the function block is just for indication I'm going to actually download that to the PLC and get it to run so we have a live system to work with So now my function block should tell me that I'm stopped. So it's waiting for a command to start. So the whole the whole idea is that we have to build a function block first, build the graphics first, create the agents or the tags inside the agent server um, first, get everything to work before we can actually think of getting it in as a template. So that's what I'm going to do now. Is first we did the function block. I've cre I created everything for that function block to work in the PLC and now the next step is where we're, go we're going to build a simple graphic that works with this function block and so I'm going back to Maps Designer um, in the projects you have a MA process suite project so underneath templates I'm going to create a new folder and we're going to call it sample start the same as what my function block is called and that will also be the same name that my template at the end of the day will have 
for that sample start we're going to create a new graphic we don't need so much real estate it's just going to be a small little template so what I'm basically going to do is I'm just going to add two buttons on there the one is going to be button start and a button for stop and I'm just going to put a little vector triangle down change it to a solid color for now and make it red and that will be my indication So all it's going to do is when we hit start we're going to change the line color to say that it's starting until we get the run feedback then the inside color will change and when we stop we will show on the outside line color again that it's stopping until we lose the field input and it will stop. Okay, Because we're working with templates everything needs to happen through the spider configuration window. So to make it easier, all all templates work in the same manner. So I'm just gonna open up, for instance, the analog input advanced one to show you that there's a couple of things that we require for this template to work. The first thing is we need a constant which consists out of the agent server name and the equipment name. So I'm just gonna make a copy of that. and bring that into um, my new star template. The second thing we're going to need is we are going to need a string builder. So what the string builder does, it basically takes the two objects and it combines it with a dot in between. So the reason for that is if you look in the enterprise manager, the data sources, the first thing we need, need to look at is the, the data source called a droid. The second thing we're looking at is the equipment name. The equipment name is the name that the maps project in the end of the day when you specify your project when you get down to your equipment level you specify a name for each and every piece of equipment and that will be replaced or substituted inside this equipment name field so we can build a string or a full-on tag name description for the value that we require. So I'm going to make a copy of that. So we take the agent server name and we take the equipment name. For this instance we're just going to call it start. And now we need to start animating and getting this to work. So the way that maps work is that we use things called variable data elements. So I need to add a variable data element which we will call status we will bring that value in there <coughs> and then we have to define now. So in other words if I do this it will be a droid dot start underscore underscore <coughs> skater status word one and we want the digit zero value so if I look back into IEC developer and I look back at the DUT you'll see that my status word digit zero is actually telling me that it's stopped so we're going to use digit 0, 1, 2 and 3 to give me my animation of my 
rectangle in the designer. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to add three more. So we're going to look at digit 0, digit 1, digit 2 and digit 3. Okay, the next part is we need to put some animation to it. So I'm going to add a multi-state color, which we're going to use as my running indication. So I'm going to add two inputs. The first input I want is my stopped and my running indication. So that's digit <coughs> 0 and digit 2 according to my DUT in IEC. So it's stopped and running. And then we need to build the states. So if it is stopped, so if input 1 is equal to 0 and or is equal to 1 and input 2 is equal to is equal to 0, it means it's in the stop state. So then the color should be red. The next state is to say that if it is not, st or if stop is zero, but running is one, then I want the color green. So now if I click on my object, I can specify my indicator start, its appearance, its background color will change to this color. So that is for running. We can make a copy of that. And we'll say starting. So it is starting, stopping. We'll say it's green when it's starting and it's red when it's stopping and this will go to my line stroke and that means to change the physical outline color of that rectangle. <coughs> so that's everything for the status. The next thing we need to do is we need to add another variable data element which will be the control part of my function block. So once again the input is the <coughs> the name from the string builder. We add a variable data element so we're looking at digit zeros value and we're also looking at digit 1's value. So digit 0 is start and digit 1 is stop. So we need to add two operator actions. We're just going to digitally set the boolean to true. We call this start. So it will get its input value from there and it will push the output to digit zero. And then we also need to say that this will be triggered from an event and it will be triggered when I click on button start. So once again I'm going to make a copy of that. This time we're going to call it stop. It 
gets its input value from the stop from digit 0 1 and it gives its output to digit 0 or digit 1 and this will be on button stop click Okay. so that's the graphic side done <coughs> the next side the next part that we need to do is we now need to go and define agents or tags and link them to the PLC program to make this work so because we called our device start and we specified that it will have an underscore control word and the underscore status word that's the way we need to define the tags so if I open up the configurator for a droid we go to marshals the first thing we define is a start skater status word 1 and we also add a control word 1 okay. the status word for instance will be our starting no, sorry stopped starting running and stopping my control word will have a start command and a stop command but they will be pulsed so in other words it when we set the boolean to true it will only stay high for three seconds and then automatically switch off Okay. the next thing we need to do is we need to physically scan these control words and status words to the PLC so we specify PLC A, the control word is on D0 and my status word is on D100. So my control word is on D0 increasing the scan rate saying that it's output enabled so we can actually write to the PLC and then my status word is on D100 we can start the device to start scanning and now if we preview it should say that it is in stop mode so if I open up IEC again I can monitor the function block and if I press start you'll say that it's starting and the moment I bring my run feedback on it will go into running Then, if I hit stop it will go into stopping until I take the run feedback away and that will say stop <coughs> so that's the principles behind building a template you have to physically define all the different parts of the template first you need to define the, the function block the graphic and the associated agents that will be required to run this function block as a template. Thank you Vainant. So that is how to prepare the function block, graphics and configure the agent server for a new template. That's it for part one of how to create a new maps template. In the second part of the training video we will show you how to add these components into the maps library. Please be advised that a droid will assist you in adding your new templates to the maps library if required. I hope you found this helpful and I hope to hear from you in the comment section. Thank you for watching.